hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to finish up our laser engraved mirror from Tuesday's show. Now on this week's episode of Alternative Tuesdays, we laser engraved a leopard into a mirror. And you guys saw what a difference it makes to backlight one of those mirrors. So on today's show, the woodworking section of the channel, we are going to finish this thing off by making the custom illuminated frame for these mirrors. And it all starts off with a little bit of cherry. Well, I have milled the stock to make our box frame for this mirror, and it is 9 sixteenths of an inch thick, and I have cut it to a width of one and three quarters of an inch. Now, the very first thing that we need to do is we need to cut some dados into our piece here. However, the dados are nice and easy because they're one eighth of an inch wide, which also happens to be the kerf width of our table saw blade. So the very first thing we want to do is I think I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch, maybe even three sixteenths from the front edge of each of these pieces and I'm going to cut a dado that is five sixteenths of an inch deep and we will do that on one edge of each piece over at the table saw. Now, after you've tested that your mirror will fit in this groove, just in case you used a different mirror than what I did, we need to cut another one of these dados exactly the same, but we're going to bring it down another 3 16ths of an inch. So we're gonna leave a 3 16ths of an inch gap and we're gonna run a second 1 8 inch wide dado. The last cut that we need to make on our stock will be a rabbit on the back end of our board it will be 5 sixteenths of an inch uh, deep and a quarter inch wide. And at this point, you should have your stock that looks like this with two one eighth of an inch wide dados in the front end of our frame and this rabbit quarter inch by 5 sixteenths at the back of your frame. Uh, the quarter inch side is on the depth here going this way. Guys, all you need to do at this point is we're gonna take this over to the table saw and using our miter fence, I'm going to use a fine cross cut blade and we're gonna cut this into a frame that will fit our 12 inch by 12 inch mirror tile in our dados. Well, I've dry fit the frame together and everything fits nicely. I have tested our mirror in here and it fits really well. But the next thing that we need is a piece of plexi. And we will cut this to be the same size as what our mirror is. Now this is, I believe, 332nd thick plexi. Um, you can use whatever plexi you need. This is an old piece. It's got scratches on it. It's got some kind of gunk on it here. And I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Because the next step that we want to do is we want to sand the living tar out of this thing to give it a frosted look. We're gonna start at 80 grit. We're gonna work our way up to 220 on both sides. And once we get that frosted, I'll show you what we end up with. When you're done, you end up with something like this. Now, truth be told, I stopped this at 80 grit because I really liked the frosted effect that I was getting. The finer the grits that you go, the finer the scratches you will put into the uh, plexi and the less frosting you will get. I know it sounds strange, but that's how sanding works. You just put finer and finer scratches in until they're unnoticeable. So we don't want to go too crazy here. 80 grit was just fine and we got a really great frosted look. This is actually going to be the diffuser for our light source that will be in our um, frame. So let's see what we're gonna do with this. First, we wanna clean off any of the dust that's on it, and then I'll show you what to do next. What we have here is we're gonna take out one section, and this diffuser will get placed in the lower groove here of our frame. Not the outer one, that is reserved for our mirror. So we're just gonna place this in here. 
We're just doing a dry fit to make sure everything is going to go together the way that we want it. And we'll just clamp this together to see how we're looking. And it looks good so far. I think I like the way that fits. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Are you guys happy with that? <laughs> as long as you're happy with it. All right, so once we get this done here, we're gonna clamp it up. And this is what you're looking at at this point. You have this square frame. You still have your dado right here around this outside lip, and we still have our rabbet on our back for our backer board. So what you want to do now is choose which one of these pieces, whichever one you want, which one is going to be the top of your frame. That's important. So it doesn't matter for me which one. I'm going to choose, say, this one up here. Now this is gonna sound a little strange, but what we're going to do is we're going to set up our table saw to cut in this top kerf. And we're gonna raise our blade so that it actually cuts this top section right off. But we're going to save it. Don't throw it out, you're going to need it. So let's get that top piece cut off. So now that strip that you cut off, put this aside. We're going to need that a little later. And we're going to glue this frame together. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to sand all of your interior surfaces. You're not gonna get the chance to sand it once this frame is together because this diffuser or your sand at plexi is actually going to be glued in here at this point and be a permanent fixture here in this frame. So apply glue to all your surfaces here in the 45s, glue this and clamp it together, clean up all your squeeze out as best you can, you really want to be sure you do that, and then let this frame set up and completely dry. Well, at this point, I have some 1 8 of an inch thick setup blocks. I'm going to use them as spacers. And this piece that we saved, we are now going to apply a little bit of glue to our miters here. And using our spacers, we are going to glue this right here in place at the top of our frame. Well, while we're waiting for this to dry, we can move on with some other steps of the project. And I have cut a piece of quarter inch thick hardboard that fits into our rabbit that we cut earlier in our frame. It's got about a 16th of an inch of play uh, just to make it a little easier to remove. Now guys, what I've done is all the way around the perimeter, I have placed a line 5 sixteenths of an inch in and that is just to show us how much room we have to work with in the center of our board. Because what I'm going to do at this point is I have one of these Govee uh, full color LED light strips. You guys have seen me use these on the show before. I'll place a link to it below and I'm going to adhere strips of LEDs all the way along here to completely light up this backboard on the interior. Um, guys, this is a long process. It's a soldering job. I'm not going to film it. If uh, I've done videos on how to solder these LED strips before, I'll post the link to that below. If you're interested, of course, you can check it out. So let me get all of these light strips uh, soldered and attached onto our backer board, and then we can move on. And 168 soldering joints later, I end up with this. Um, now guys, this here will now become the backer board that will illuminate our mirror from behind. So at this point in time, what we want to do is we want to give our mirror a really good sanding, round over any sharp corners kind of thing, and then we can move on to the next step. Well, due to the fact that there's going to be an electrical cord coming out of this frame, I don't want this to hang on the wall. Uh, I don't want a cord hanging on the wall. I think it would look hideous. So I want this to be a standalone frame. So what I have done is I've made a couple of simple brackets. Uh, they have a notch cut out in the top of it that coincides with the thickness of your frame. I've got a little bit of a radius, they're four inches long. Guys, these can be anything you want them to be. 
And all we're going to do is I am going to glue these in place about an inch in from each end. I'll make sure that they're square so that they look good and they will serve to allow the stand to be, or the frame rather, to be sturdy while it's standing in place. Now, one thing I want to point out is that we're going to attach our backer board, but you want to make sure that the groove that you place here at the back is not so deep that it encroaches here on our rabbit. Uh, just in case at some point in time you need to remove this backer board so that you can get in here and work on the LEDs so should something burn out or short out, you want to be able to remove that. So try not to go above that rabbit's edge. Now guys, with this done now, uh, I want to drill the frame out for the photo turns that we're going to use to hold our backer board in place. So we'll just place our backer board into our frame. I have these brass photo turns. I'm going to drill out the holes and we will screw our photo turns in place in order to hold our backer board. And what you end up with is this. So at this point, guys, other than applying the finish, this project is pretty much complete. So all you want to do is take your engraved mirror and in that slot at the top we will just gently lower this into the frame just like that and while it really doesn't look like much like this once you backlight it guys check that out that looks fantastic and of course with the color change LEDs, you can change it however you wish, whatever you see fit, um, whichever you think matches the engraving that you have in the frame. So a little bit of extra versatility. And with these kits, it also has a remote, of course, which also helps. So guys, that is the project. And I don't know what you think, but I think that looks amazing. And there you have it. Framing your laser engraved mirror tiles. Guys, this is a fantastic project. It's a lot of fun and it has some great skill builders. One of the most important skill builders here is measuring. Um, getting those dados spaced out to hold the diffusers and the mirror and you know getting the frame done properly with the 45s and clamped in place. Measuring for your little stand bases at the bottom that hold everything together. All of this Every bit of it is skill building uh, in the shop. And although the project is a simple one, the results are spectacular. It's a very striking project. Not so much with the lights off. With the lights off, it's a, yeah, whatever. It's a laser engraved mirror. I can sort of see an image, but as soon as you illuminate it, it really pops out of that frame and just looks so great. So you may be wondering, why bother with the removable mirror? Guys, you can engrave whatever you want on these mirrors, and this frame is meant as a display for your latest engraving, let's say. It doesn't have to be a tiger or a leopard or a cat or an animal. What about your favorite sports team? What about having it on your home bar, uh, lit up, alternating in the different colors of your favorite sports team with that sports team logo engraved on the back of the mirror. It would look fantastic. How about a happy birthday? How about happy anniversary? How about Merry Christmas? You could do a Christmas engraved theme on there. Maybe a Christmas tree, a Santa Claus. How about Halloween? How about a jack-o-lantern? A very fancy jack-o-lantern engraved on the mirror and then illuminate it in orange at Halloween time. The possibilities, guys, are endless, and this is a multi-season, multi-use frame, and you're only limited by what you want to engrave on the mirror. Now, guys, if you're only tuning into today's show when you're not sure about the mirror engraving, check out Tuesday's episode where I show you the engraving of this actual mirror. I'll put the link to that below. But guys, whether or not you check this out uh, or whether or not you try the engraving, Try the skill building of making the box frame or making the illuminated box frame. You never know what you might come up with. 
One other thing, guys, that was not mentioned here on the show, uh, but I'm going to mention it now just to be completely transparent. After that one piece of plexi was glued into the frame to diffuse those LEDs, I really wasn't happy with the amount of diffusion that I was getting. Essentially, when you turned on the LEDs, you could see the individual dots all through the mirror, and I wasn't happy with that. Simple solution for me, I cut a second piece of plexiglass and sanded it all up to fit inside the frame, tight against the original one, sanded it both sides, and just used a little dab of hot glue in each corner to hold that in place and seal it in there. And uh, it diffused it perfectly and evened out my light. So don't be afraid to add a little bit of extra diffusion or change the project up as you see fit if you're not happy with the results that you're getting. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. This one has been a lot of fun. I have been wanting to do a mirror since I started with laser engravers. And I don't know what took me so long. I guess maybe... I don't know, the apprehension of failure, possibly, but either way, I'm glad that I finally tried it and brought it to you guys along with this frame because the project is absolutely amazing. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you're going to give this a try for yourself and get some of those skill building uh, exercises, we'll say, going in your shop. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.